Okay, I think we're rolling. I think we're good. Are we good? I think things are good. Okay, good evening everybody. We are back again with another uh, wildlife talk and we had a bunch. I had several different requests come through uh, both from last stream and through some messages to redo my otter discussion again. Uh, excellent. You see otters and a sea otter that you see is an otter. That was a terrible, terrible joke, and I shall continue to do so. So, yes, we had requests about the otters all again. So we'll be hashing over some stuff that I did uh, last time, but I figured it would be fun if we covered it. Uh, there's a few more details that I had uh, found and discovered in further research with the animals that I don't think I shared last time. Wow, I need to work on lighting in this room because this is... This is, this is yeah, the backlight is washing out everything. I'll figure that out later. Probably get a better light bulb for the room. The hat doesn't help, so I'll probably have to put a light or something. Anyway, that's later. We'll deal with that all later. So, I want to start things off with, uh, we'll be talking about three different types of otters, <clears throat> which is the sea otter, the American river otter, and both of these are pictured here, and then what I like to dub is the internet otter, or better known as the Asian small clawed otter. They are um, the most common three animals relating to otters in general. Um, the big thing about them is the public perception, what people see about them. Um, they, they look rather cute. Um, some people have seen them as pets, predominantly the Asian small clawed otter because they're so small. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, there's also the thing of the sea otters holding hands when they sleep. And we'll touch on that further in. And just the general general playfulness of otters in general. So there's a whole bunch of things that people get drawn to about otters. They're cute, they're fuzzy, they're furry, they look cute. That's, that's what it really boils down to is the cute stuff. So we're going to start on the American River Otter will be our first one. Uh, Lantra canadensis. They are... Uh, <clears throat> good grief, I got something in my throat. Everybody make sure you got your water. So, um, they average about anywhere from 15 to 30 pounds on, on a regular scale. There have been larger, and predominantly those are overweight that have been kept in captivity and haven't had a very healthy diet. Um, average length is anywhere from 30 to 40 inches, so about three and a half, almost four feet for an animal, and that's a good sized animal too. Um, they are active all year long. They don't hibernate, they don't tend to hide away in the wintertime, they are active all year long. Um, they are not restricted to life in the water either. It's where they are, are adapted for, but they will travel over land uh, up to about 25 miles overland in a day. Uh, they're willing to travel. So they're not water locked, but they're most commonly found in water based shoreline areas like rivers, ponds, lakes, and the ocean. Um, litters can range anywhere from one to three on average. The most found have been five to six in a litter at a time. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty excessively large family. They are a colony. They are a, uh, a colony-based animal, so it's a family group or unit with of a couple different generations that'll stick together most of the time. Predominantly, it's a mated pair that has their offspring of the year. The offspring grow up, go on their way, and the family continues on from there. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of things that have happened in terms of with river otters, uh, in terms of some stories of human interaction. This was actually something that happened um, not too long, a couple of years ago, uh, very close to where I live. It's a place called the, the city of Snohomish in Washington. I used to live there uh, in Snohomish County. There is the Snohomish River. Are we sensing a theme here? <laughs> um, there was actually a, a family that was there swimming. Actually, let me make sure I want to get the report. to make sure I got the damage what well, basically would happen to them because the attack happened in the water um, where there was a family they were out swimming and the uh, river otter uh, oh, there we go um, 
a river otter came out and attacked the family's grandson or one of the grandchildren and um no it was a just the child the mother ran out there um pulled the animal off the kid because it had wrapped up and then started attacking the child in the water they will drown people if they're given the opportunity hasn't happened successfully yet in terms of somebody dying by otters other animals will get drowned that actually did happen in a zoo and i'll touch on that in a little bit um basically she pulled it off the child so it started attacking her she nearly lost her eye needed reconstructive surgery and had about a hundred stitches in her face and head like her, her entire eye was pretty much removed from her face because of this animal um uh, Washington Fish and Wildlife did go out and ended up euthanizing the animal because it had attacked a person. They feared it for uh, a re reoccurring attack. It was not found to be rabid. Everything tested negative for rabies. It looked like they had stumbled too close, but as soon as an animal attacks a human, that's when Fish and Wildlife has to step in and say they have to put it down. That's just how that works. I'm not the judge. Um, predominantly, it was the idea uh, was that uh, they had found a den spot, but the animal, let's see here. The animal was, <clears throat> I'm trying to find the report if they found out if it was a male or a female otter. But yeah, the otter will be, would be, they announced that it would be killed unless it's a female with pups. From the bits I'm gleaning from it is that it was a hyper uh, hyper protective male had gone after them for getting too close for territory dispute. That makes good sense enough to me uh, in terms of this is just what nature does. Um, but yeah, about a hundred stitches needed on her face. I've had I've had stitches put into my forehead, and that was about fifteen to twenty of them uh, up in my forehead. So I believe me, I get it how dangerous that can be. Um, there was also a zoo. Yeah, if, definitely uh, if it was running season. I keep forgetting, I just need to have these things pulled up. Let's see, I forget what zoo it was. Well, basically there was a zoo that um, the Birmingham Zoo. No, it wasn't Birmingham Zoo. No, 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 no it was not Birmingham Zoo. Uh, basically, there was a zoo that kept both um, monkeys and apes in the same exhibit as they did the river otters down in the, the water area of the enclosure. And basically what ended up happening, one of the monkeys got too close and was teasing the otter enough that the, they finally, the otters grabbed it and drown it in the exhibit. Like the keepers didn't even get there fast enough to rescue the monkey. It was dead and they ate it. They completely ate it. So it was, uh, I gotta remember to start, as I think of these articles, I just gotta have them pulled up. Let's see, oh, go away. Brock's Zoo, the Brock Zoo in New York. Um, it was a mixed enclosure, like I was saying, where they, they ended up dragging it down into the water. And they could zookeepers couldn't get down there fast enough in order to free it or try to break up the fight. But that's ended up, what ended up happening. So do not, do not muck with it. If you can help it, don't muck with otters in the wild. Just please, please don't. Uh, switching gears, um, talking about sea otters. Uh, these are these animals are found only in saltwater environments, so you're only going to find them in the ocean areas. That's why they're called sea otters. Go figure. Um, they are much much larger, ranging uh, anywhere from 30 to 90 pounds. So and they can be usually three and a half to five feet long. So much much larger animal. Uh, they're the second largest otter in the otter family. The largest being the giant Amazon river otter down in South America. Um, 
They will go on land if they want to, but that's about it. Off topic, but on topic. Yeah, just uh, uh, what I had a saying. I had a saying. A door from afar. A door from afar. That is my favorite. My favorite uh, statement when it comes to dealing with animals that you think look cute, but you don't want to get near them. Just a door from afar. Um, with sea otters, they don't need to go on land. They are completely 100% capable of living in the water 100% of the time. Their food is there, they breathe, they sleep, they do everything in the water. They come onto land, sort of as a novelty, they'll go for some stuff on the shoreline, but that's about it. They will use um, ro uh, rock edges for breaking over their clams and oyster shells to eat the meat that's inside. they sit there and just start smacking it with the, you, the typical otter banging that they do um, to break open their food. Uh, <clears throat> with that being said, they are, they will, uh, repetition will stay very high. They can do up to 45 strikes in 15 seconds. So they, they can, they can work it. They can absolutely work it. And they got, they got amazing traps. Their, their trapezius muscles are fantastic. No, I really don't know. That's a joke. Um, offspring is usually a single pup. They can't maintain much more than that. Um, they are listed as a um, endangered species and protected under NOAA. That is the Federal Oceanic. Not sure if just me, but the camera is frozen. Can anybody else see? Can you see? Tell me what I'm doing. If you can see my camera, tell me what I'm doing. I'm trying to make sure that my, my equipment is good. If I need to restart the camera, I can. I also don't move a ton, so it might look like I'm not doing a lot in the image. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Easy enough. Easy enough. Okay, there we go. Um, so sea otters are also, um, they can be a bit more brutal than the river otters. Sea otters, uh, male sea otters will actually kidnap sea otter pups from females and um, in order to hold them hostage for the female to give up their food for the, for the male otters to eat. Um, they will actually take the pup and hold it underwater trying to drown it to force them to let go of their food and the male swoops in and eats the food. Um, sea otters as well, also the males, it's always the men, men always getting themselves in trouble. Um, the male sea otters have been found being sexually aggressive to harbor seal pups to the point of drowning them and then What's the right word? What's the right word? F uh, they basically do terrible, terrible sexual acts to the uh, the harbor seal pups. Um, they are usually so violent that they'll do it, that the pup dies, and they'll keep going. Um, they can do, they've done this, they found it recorded for this to be happening for up to a week long of this behavior. Um, one sea otter has also attempted to mate with a dead bird and a dead dog. Um, the otter was even suspected of killing said dog. Um, they are not great. They are not... <laughs> uh, let's see, when it comes to actual mating process with the sea otters, it is absolutely terrible. I mean, this is also, I got to check myself here. I'm equating this to the human standard of how reproductive actions happen. In nature, this is how it works. I'm going to ignore that. I see that pun, and I'm going to ignore that. Shut up. Um, <laughs> um, basically, the male ends up subduing the female by also holding her. Stop. What is going on? Um, the male will hold her head underwater in order to subdue her to the point where he can mate with her. And sometimes they will kill the female while doing this. 
Um, they will also bite her face. They've been known to actually tear pieces of their nose and face off during this. Uh, and one study found 4% of sea, female sea otter deaths come from infections of these wounds. And the males will continue to attempt mating even with the dead bodies. So, I'm changing your view on otters for you. We're getting real here. We're getting very, very weird here. Um, when it comes to... Um, when it comes to actual... Because uh, there's a lot of things like abalone. Or abalone meat. There's a lot of um, water-based uh, fisheries that use these and harvest them uh, as a food source. Along with sea urchin eggs which are used in sushi. Uh, abalone meat uh, goes usually uh, approximately from the point of this study it has been found they go for about $70 a pound and sea urchin eggs sell for $125 a pound the problem is that the sea otters like this shellfish well, and, the, and the sea urchin eggs they'll eat anywhere from 10 to 25 pounds a day uh, the people that uh, harvest shellfish see the other dark side is that it's an unfair competition because they are protected by the Endangered Species Act uh, it got so bad at one point that an Alaska senator proposed a $100 bounty on sea otters per animal to protect shellfish harvesting. And that proposal never went anywhere um, for what it is. <clears throat> and this, and the, the ending of this article, that of this, all of this that I'm reading says, you could argue that we should not impose human values on sea otters, but we already call them cute and cuddly. Don't be wrong, we need to protect sea otters, but I hope you don't mind if I call them mean and nasty as well. I think that sums up sea otters really, really well. Um, they actually can carry a couple different diseases as well. Uh, one is uh, Bartonella, which is cat scratch fever. Toxoplasmosis, uh, if those of you who know, they also know that uh, cats carry this too. House cats can carry this. Uh, Brucelliosis and uh, Crocodile... Cockadiado mycosis, uh, valley fever. You know what? I'm going to do this. How to pronounce? Coxadioido mycosis. Coxadioido mycosis. Do, do my mycosis. I, I can't. I know. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Uh, but basically, it is a uh, fungal infection. Valley fever. Uh, it's a fungus known to live in the soil, but these animals can actually contract and spread it. Uh, but it's a respiratory infection. Um, similar to... Uh, no. Valley fever. So it's a fever. It's a virus. So they have a viral infection that these animals can carry. But yeah, if you find a dead one, you can contract all of these from a dead sea otter. It is, it is pretty ugly, some of the things that they can carry. So that's a little bit more of a uh, reality check with uh, the sea otter. And I'm trying to say this is, this is just the things that are scientifically true about these animals. You can keep your cute thoughts. You can keep your cute ideas about them. That's fine. Just be aware that this is nature. This is reality. And science doesn't care about your feelings. Just how it is. Um, now, switching on to the smallest otter of the otter species, the Asian small clawed otter, or as I like to dub it, the internet otter. They are the meme-worthy otter is what ends up happening with that. Um, they can be anywhere from two feet to three feet long on the larger end and usually range anywhere from three to 12 pounds. The males and the females uh, aren't really that different in weight and size. Um, they are the highest public view of all otter species second to the sea otter. So in terms of river otters or smaller, or smaller otter species, they are the most viewed publicly. The bigger issues with them is that because of their size, they have been taken from the wild, in many cases, native well, wild caught, bred in captivity, and then the pups are sold as pets. And that's why they become uh, imprinted upon humans, but they are not a domesticated animal like a cat or a dog. They are still a wild animal that has just been captive bred, but not domestically bred for humans to have as a pet. This is, there's a study going on with foxes right now, with the red fox. Um, 
uh, I forget what it was called, but it's in Siberia. They're actually trying to breed nice foxes with nice foxes, though that deal with people more regularly, with and trying to breed in those nicer qualities. And then they did the opposite as well, where they found ones that are super aggressive to humans and breeding those with others that are super aggressive to humans. And they actually found that those that became super aggressive um, had much more pointed faces, the ears got shorter and slicker, they just they just became meaner all around. Whereas the nicer ones actually started to develop uh, our, our nowadays our dog. They had the floppy ears, they started to pant more, they started getting more variations in color. Um, I want to say it's Decoding the Dog is the documentary that was about that. So that was really cool. But that is one of the only that I'm aware of. I gotta stop, stop doing these things. Anyway, so that was one of the only animals that I'm aware of at present that is being domesticated and bred for domestication currently. So with the with the small clawed otters, if they've been found by a rescue group, that's different. If they can't be released into the wild, they belong. If they have to be taken anywhere, they should be in their na natural habitat um, reserves, like nature reserves or zoos for breeding purposes, and that'd be about it. They don't be. They're not needed as a pet for any means of what of whatsoever. Um, but then you also do see these things of the. They have these cat cafes over in um, some of the Asian countries. You see, I believe Japan is the one that's most known for that. They do have one or two of them that do have an otter cafe that uses these Asian small clawed otters. And I have no idea how they get the permits or the licensings for that. We can make that a talk for another day. But I strongly advocate against these things because it's not, it's not what is needed. Cats, fine. They're used to being around people. They're bred to be around people. But not these, not otters, not raccoons, not anything else. Sure, lizards, fine. Have a lizard. They don't care. <laughs> they care nothing except if you have food. I have one. I know this. <laughs> um, now, different methods of control for these animals to so try to get them. When I, in terms of for me, I am a nuisance wildlife removal specialist. That is my job. That my job is to, is when people call up and they have issues with these animals, my job is to remove them from the equation so we don't have more problems, be it from under the house, damaging in property, fish ponds, whatever. My job is to come up with solutions, and sometimes it requires methods to catch and remove them. That's just, that's my job. So there's a couple different things of what I do called, what's called a positive set trap. This is where I take my cage or whatever device I'm using to, get, to trap and remove these animals, I mount it right over the access point. So there's a, a hole in a crawl space or something like that. I take my trap and I bolt it right over that hole. So that way the animal, because they're only coming in and out of that one hole, it can only leave and get caught. Or if it's coming back into that hole where the cage is mounted, it'll get caught. Good grief. Sorry, I've been fighting acid reflux for the past three days. Um, so they end up getting caught in that cage, and I can take them, remove them, do what I need to with them. The other is uh, what's called a one-way door. A one-way door is very much what it sounds like. It's a, it's a, it's half a cage, where it allows me to put a flapping door where they can climb out, but they can't get back in. And so that way it allows them to naturally find their own way to go about their life and do what they want to from there. Uh, the only thing is that tends to be a little more proactive on the home in terms of making sure everything's secure. So we end up bolting a screen or guards over the different vents and different areas that these animals can get into homes. Yes, I deal with otters getting under homes regularly. And this is specifically the river otters. The American river otter is all I encounter in terms of doing actual work with. Um, and everything I use is designed for saltwater environments, so it's a high gauge metal, it's PVC coated, it's all stuff that needs to happen with that. Um, let's see. I felt like there was something else. That's right, the Am giant Amazon River Otter. Now, if any of you are um, Zoo Tycoon or, uh, or Zoo Tycoon Planet, Planet Coaster fans, um, I am, a, I am a person that plays a zoo tycoon, not zoo tycoon, planet zoo. I am a uh, planet zoo fan. And one of the things they added was the giant river otter. And I absolutely love 
um, how they added them and what they did with them. I thought it was really cool. Um, so let's see here. Save as picture. Okay, let me load up a picture here you guys can see what a giant river otter looks like. There we go. So this is a giant river otter. These guys are tremendously large. They can uh, be anywhere from six to eight feet long. They are huge. Um, their diet, part of their diet is piranha because they live in South America. Um, they can max at eight feet. I want to clarify, they max at eight feet. More on average, they're anywhere from six to seven feet. Um, their diet is predominantly piranha, crayfish, catfish, snakes, turtles, crabs, and caiman. If you don't know what a caiman is, they're a small freshwater crocodile. These guys eat crocodiles in their diet. Crocodiles. These guys, they're nuts. They're big, they're mean, um, they're, they're just, they're enormous. They, they just, they can kill, no problem. Um, they're only, they compete, they don't, they don't really have a predator aside from humans. We, we, we trap and hunt them, especially down in South America, they actually use the animal. Um, there's no real predators, but the only things they actually compete with are the neotropical otter, jaguar, and other caiman. Um, if an anaconda can catch an otter, good luck. Uh, I, I, that, that anaconda is most likely, more likely to be diet of the river otter because they move so fast, especially because they're in such an aquatic lifestyle. The anaconda could, but I find that very hard to deal with because these guys are so fluid would be a good term for it because literally they are head and body. They don't really have much of a neck, so to speak, because where your neck is is where your shoulder blades attach. Their neck is so long on their body. You can see in the picture here, um, their neck is just about the same size as their head. So it's really hard to get them caught up. <laughs> yes, Jaguar of the car. Um, you, uh, little do we know, the uh, Jaguar is actually what... Uh, um, Yep, no, no actual natural predators aside from humans. Realistically, I was trying to find a, I was trying to figure out a car joke with that jaguar statement. Um, and yes, an otter would win versus a jaguar car. It, it just would win. <laughs> um, but yeah, these guys are the biggest in the. Um, let's see here. I want to say they're the largest in the mustelid family. Because that is the same family that is the wolverine, the badger, the honey badger, otters, weasels, ferret, mink. Uh, anything that is weasel base is a mustelid. Or a mustelid. So the, the uh, South American river otter are absolutely enormous. They have one of the, I think they have some of the cooler markings on their bodies, but they look absolutely terrifying. Um, Let's see here. Like most otters, all of them have squeaks, pips, and growls. They will do a, um, uh, a kind of, oh, not quite a chuff, but they'll, they'll, they'll huff at you. Um, as somebody that has caught otters and had one staring at me, that is what they do. Um, their den is what is called a holt. Otter dens are called holts, whereas beavers are call, use a lodge. So that's something to be very clear about. Now, the American River Otter will actually sometimes um, beat up beaver so that they move out of the lodge and the River Otter takes over the lodge instead. And then they start living inside of there. Now, beavers will sometimes, they'll abandon their lodge and animals will move in anyway, but the River Otters will actually eat and kill the young beaver as well. So there's not a lot that they won't do to make sure they get what they want. Yeah, just like anything else, these American river, the South American river otters, they are absolutely, they're crazy. Um, 
but there's not a lot of them left. Uh, the river, uh, looking at this article, the giant river otter has lost 80% of its South American range. Uh, while still present in, in a number of north central countries, giant otter populations are under considerable stress. The range has become discontinuous, so they've broken off from a lot of these different areas. Uh, a study in 2006, 2006 suggests that there's about 1,000 to 5,000 of these animals remaining in the wild. Um, I can only assume that they don't do well in, in uh, captivity, which is why, um, you know what, let's check that out. Okay, so there are some zoos that have them. I'm trying to see if they list who does. Zoos on four continents, South America, North America, Europe, and Asia, work together with partners for research, conservation, and authorities to preserve the species. And that is from a book, oh, written in 2020. Okay. So they've been kept in captivity or in different zoos, at least, for the past 130 years. But husbandry has really only really uh, pushed forward on these animals in the past 20 years. Uh, just in order for them to actually be able to breed them and try to bring back the population to South America. Because we could use them down there because the North American beaver has gone nuts down in South America and just destroying the natural environment of the wetlands. Uh, where there's supposed to be a lot of streams and trickleways where the otters thrive, the beavers have actually been damming it up and creating marshes and bogs where it doesn't. these ecosystem is not designed to handle that much water. So I know a lot of guys who go down there for hunting and shooting trips that they'll, they'll some areas, local areas, will give uh, bounties on beaver down in uh, South America. So let's see here. I believe that's it. There we go. Um, San Diego Zoo Wildlife Allegiance. It looks like they have... Do they have them? Oh, so that's part of the other problem. Mercury. Mercury has been a big thing that's been affecting the otters from the mining that's been happening in South America. Uh, because the fish absorb the mercury in their, in their bodies, and the otters eat predominantly fish, so it's actually killing them with the uh, increased mercury levels in their bodies. Um, let's see here. So I don't know if this is part of the zoo that has them or not. There's actually a giant otters um, husbandry guide for uh, zoos, aquariums, and wildlife sanctuaries. This is hilarious. They actually have a husbandry guide for this. This is this is how I find this to be hilariously cool, actually that somebody's actually gone and produced uh, something like this in order to pass on to different zoo groups. Um, this is this is really fantastic for me. <laughs> but this, I'll, I'll read over this later. You guys are more interested in the other stuff. Um, but yeah, this is, you'll have to check your local zoos to see who has um, the giant river otters. It looks like there is um, Birmingham Zoo. Wow, I found it sound terrible. Where the hell is Birmingham Zoo? Alabama. Alabama has uh, some giant river otters. Okay. Well, I'll have to make a trip down to Alabama at some point. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is cool. I'll have to check that out later. So yeah, guys, um, that's a lot about the otters 
in particular. Let's see, I covered covered the breed, I covered their reproduction. It's actually really cool. Um, there was, oh, I remember something my, from last time. Um, I want to say it's either Thailand. Who was it? Was it the hairy-nosed otter? There was actually a um, there was a whole thing in one. Of, I want to say it was Thailand that had two different. It was on social media. They had two different um, otter families that lived in this the canals of this one city. Sorry, I have some. Oh, they had um, a whole family of these animals. Um, Oh, I have a hair or something that's just driving me nuts. They had a whole family of them, or two different families that were living in uh, these water canals, and they were actually competing with each other, and they would show the different videos of them interacting, fighting, taking over different environments uh, of this park. And they had different postings where people weren't allowed to actually um, interact with the otters. You could, uh, like I said, they were asking to adore from afar for these animals, but I thought it was really, really cool. That they were doing like here's this one family and look they're chasing away a fem uh, female with pups from this area to reclaim their territory it was really cool um to see it i want to say discovery did something about that but i honestly think it was uh um i want to say it was just a thing on facebook for what that was Man, I think, why do I think of these ideas when I'm on stream and not actually like, wow, I should have prepped this better for this kind of thing. I just, I think of these things as I talk. So it's always weird when I pull up these uh, different concepts and thoughts. So maybe I got to start pre-prepping how I talk about these animals uh, next time. But yeah, there is, um, in terms of the otters, there's a, there's a couple species out there. There is the Eurasian otter. The smooth-coated otter, North American river otter, marine otter, southern river otter, neotropical river otter, which is the one that lives nearby with the uh, giant river otter, the African clawless otter, um, the giant river otter, and the Asian small clawed otter, and the sea otter. So there's many different types. Oh, there's also, come on, just give me the, oh my gosh. I just want the image. Yeah, the spotted neck, the smooth coated, and hairy nosed are the other ones that are out there. So there's only four, five, six, seven, 13 actual otter species in the world. Now, there's always going to be some families and whatnot, but that's about it. So well, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, this was a uh, talk over of the otter subject. And um, I didn't really have anything else to add to that, just that I, um, yeah, I'm kind of stumbling now because I ran out of content. Go figure. Uh, but yeah, um, give me ideas for next Friday. Oh, you did not need to hear that. <laughs> give me ideas for next Friday for uh, a subject for me to talk about. Uh, I'm still deciding on what I want to talk about on Tuesday for uh, our next stream, but I will... Um, See about getting a couple things put together. Um, I don't know if I want to do Twitter yet or not. We'll see. If you guys want something particular, send me a message on uh, Twitch, and uh, we'll talk about it from there. Otherwise, thank you all. I'm going to sign off for the night. You guys take care.